Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Build Tune Race. In this episode, I'm going to talk about the whole last year, do a little year-end recap, if you will. Uh, it's been such a crazy year, I wanted to go back over some of those moments. We started off the year with getting the Buick running. It was a pretty crazy ordeal. Um, had a lot of little new car blues, if you will. Uh, but we got everything running, everything working on the car, got to take it out and do some driving, even put it in a car show or two at the beginning of the year uh, to show off the car and kind of enjoy it a little bit while it was still cold uh, here in Colorado. This was just after getting a new interior in the car. We ended up weighing the car. It came out a little bit heavier than we expected, but the car is a full on street car, has everything there. Twin turbo LS and all the works, AC, heat, everything. So it's a, it's a complete street car. During this time, I was tuning a few cars as well. Uh, helped him get his Camaro started up for the first time. It's a little twin turbo LS car that uh, we will continue to play with here this next year as well. One of the biggest things that happened to me in 2019 is end of January on my 30th birthday, I left my job of nine years for a career in automotive. I took a job doing social media and marketing for Motion Raceworks. It's been such a crazy time. I've traveled all over the US I've been to many races, met a ton of people because of this, and learned a lot about making videos and content for the internet, as well as just marketing and the business space in automotive. Since the year before, I bought the Mazda. I wanted to make sure that we were going to make it to Rocky Mountain Race Week. I didn't make it the year before, so I set out to make sure that I was going to make it this year. The dates were released, and the event started right here in my local town of Pueblo, Colorado and I knew I had to make it. There was no option to not make this event. So over the next three or four months, we just worked crazy hard on the Mazda and just kept going on it to try to make this event. I made a video about the Camaro. It's had over 36,000 views at this point. It's a video about the project, where it was, how I built it, and the parts that I used to give some people information on the car in case they wanna build their own. And that's what got me into wanting to make videos like this. We then took the Buick out for a little cruise, went to a car show, and started to make some pulls into Boost so we could start dialing the car in. There's no tracks open, we just wanted to make sure that everything was checked out on the car. Well, it got a little sketchy and we kind of went off the road. <laughs> that video has now been viewed over a million times on Facebook, which is just so crazy to see. With the new job, I traveled to Lights Out 10. This was my first ever radial race and what a incredible experience this was that race is just insane and i can't wait to go back again uh, that is when i made the video announcing that i was doing this type of stuff full time with motion right after we got back from lights out 10 i got a call from doug at motion saying that we had an opportunity to fly down and help garrett cletus mcfarland install a mechanical fuel system on leroy so a week later, I was on a plane headed to Florida. That was an amazing time. We built a lot of content down there for that to show how our new mechanical fuel system for motion worked and how it was installed on a car. And I also got assigned the underside of Leroy. Soon after this, we finished up the Buick. We knew something just wasn't quite right with the O2 sensors. I had fought this for like the last month, um, tried different O2s, tried different injectors, just tried everything. Uh, and I just couldn't quite figure it out. We then dove into the engine and found out that it had uh, rocker and push rod that wasn't quite right and had to replace it literally the day before we left for Texas 2K. We headed to Texas 2K just as a, this will be a good test bed. It's early in the year, weather's decent there. We can get the car out. We can kind of shake it down and see what it'll do. Well, we entered into the roll racing competition and after a couple passes, we qualified with a 170 something mile an hour pass. Uh, that was pretty fun. It was pretty interesting. And then we got a little bit competitive. We ended up running a much faster car in the early rounds of competition, turned the car up quite a bit, and went 185 or 186 miles an hour. And that was quite an experience. That, that was only about five or six passes on the car. By the end of the event, we had went 189 miles an hour in a 1961 Buick in the land of GTRs and Lambos. We also got a 1320 feature video out of the deal, and that was pretty awesome. After this, it was time to get back on the Mazda. It was so far away from being ready. I didn't, I thought I could get it done. Then I didn't, then I did. And then we ran into issues and then we worked on it a whole lot more. And it was just such a crazy deal of literally shutting down life, working and working on that car. While working on Clyde, it also came up that it was the start of the race season and we wanted to take the Camaro out and race salty a little bit. Um, true street events are what I built that car for. And we had some local events. So took the car out and ended up in the finals, but lost in the finals. 
We took the Buick to another car show and ended up winning Best Domestic. That was an awesome time. Uh, it was really cool to see everybody's reaction on the car. Everywhere we take it, the car just gets a ton of attention. We worked on the Mazda some more and then got it running. The first fire up was a huge success. It was a uh, very exciting time, if you will. It, just to have a project of that much work and that much time and energy come to life finally, but we weren't done. We still ran into some issues after that with the transmission and still trying to make it to race week. We made it to race week though. We made the first passes in Clyde the night before race week started, and then we were off to race week. That week was one of the funnest weeks I've ever had in my entire life. We got to spend it with family and friends, meet a whole bunch of new friends. April got to drive and learn a bunch about the car. And it was just such an amazing experience being able to do car things with other car people for an entire week. The weekend after this, we got back, we took the Buick to the half mile event, which is what the car was originally built for. We had a goal set to go 200 mile an hour in a standing half mile. We weren't 100% sure how hard that was going to be to reach. We figured it wouldn't be easy though. After day one, we had some struggles. We had some issues. We almost thought we hurt the car. Came back the next day and after a couple passes, we did it. We went 200 miles an hour in a 1961 Buick in the standing half mile. That is a day that I'm sure a lot of us will remember for a long time. It's just one of those things when you set out for a goal with a car and you're able to achieve it, it's pretty remarkable and just such an amazing experience. To be able to achieve something like that, whether you've built it, I've been tuning on it, or just driving it even. My dad did an amazing job and he was just so excited to get that 200 mile an hour t-shirt. Oh, and we also got another 1320 video out of it. Soon after this, it was back to racing the Camaro. Salty went out to another True Street event. I was able to set the personal best by only a couple hundreds, but it was still a new personal best and always try to achieve new goals. For the next couple weeks, we took the Mazda out. April was driving it, getting more comfortable with it, learning to drive it, trying some different things like bracket racing, even a little bit of grudge racing. And I was playing with tuning it. This is the first Gen 5 car I've ever tuned. And that's something I wanted to do with this car. That's why it has a Gen 5 engine in it, is I wanted a car that I could tune on and play with and learn the Gen 5 LT engine. I ended up heading to my very first Cletus and Cars with Motion Raceworks. We headed down to support Garrett's event, and what an amazing time that was. Seeing a burnout pit, just so many people around it, watching all the burnouts happen, and then watching some of our favorite cars race, uh, hanging out with a bunch of friends. But man, it was hot down there. After getting back from Cletus and Cars, we headed to LS Fest. LS Fest is such an amazing event. If you never have been and you have an LS type car or just want to go to an amazing event to see LS powered cars, go to LS Fest. We headed to Bowling Green and it took us like over 17 hours to get there. It was a very long drive. We ended up taking both the Mazda down for April to race and people to check out because it was something different. I felt that a lot of people would like to see it. And we also took the Buick. Heading down there, we had the plan of I would be doing some of the first quarter mile passes in the Buick and starting to set up the two-step and the boost controller and everything else. That was part of the goal was to go down there and set up the Buick for drag racing. Since we had reached our goal in the half mile, we wanted to see what it could do in the quarter. After the Mazda went 12.0 and the Buick went 8.47 on a very soft tune-up, we ended up with two feature videos from Holly themselves. You'll never get these types of opportunities if you don't get in your car and go enjoy it. So if you have a car that you're able to go enjoy, take it out and do something with it. Another event that we were able to go to this year was a Hot Rod Rock and Rumble. It's an old school hot rod show that you can't even get into unless you have a 1972 and older vehicle. Well, good thing Clyde's 1972 and that opened up some other opportunities for us to take him to certain events like that and the National Street Rod Association since it is a classic car. One of the final no prep races came at the end of the year. I had ended up in the final. This was my third final of the year in True Street. I had lost both times, one by a malfunction on the trans brake and one by just getting out ran. So this time I knew I had to do something. I was up against our buddy Jim again in the finals and I was trying to figure out what, how I was going to win this thing. I'm out of fuel pump in the Camaro. I'm not sure what I'm going to do. But I went up there, and I'd been watching the light all night. And I said, if I can guess at this instant green, maybe I could do it. And I was like, nope, don't just throw away the race because anything could happen. Well, when the lights dropped, I decided to guess. I could fill it. Somehow went double O2 on an instant green. Double O2 on an instant green. I have never been double O2 on a light ever. And I went double O2 on an instant green to win $2,000. After this, I flew to Iowa, 
to go to motion to help Doug swap out his pristine, perfect condition Nova over to EFI. This car is immaculate, and we took a perfectly good untouched car and swapped it to EFI. But it's a much better driver now. If you haven't checked out those videos, you should. After this, everything has slowed down a little bit for the end of the year. I've continued to work on some projects. We have a lot of plans for next year. I traveled to SEMA to check out some of that stuff and see all the cool vehicles there. And then to one of my favorite shows of the year, PRI, the Performance Racing Industry Show. I headed out there with Motion once again. I've been all over the country with them and thanks to them for the opportunity. It's been such an amazing time. We got to check out all the new products, all the new cars and get a, some ideas. This last year has been full of racing, ups and downs, lots of work, time and energy and money spent to go racing. But I wouldn't change it for the world. This is what I love to do. The Camaro will be getting big updates here soon. Thank you to everyone that supports my content and everything that I do in the automotive industry. And I hope you enjoy these videos. I can't wait to show you what's to come in 2020.